What's going on, pro staffers? How are you? This is a video all about whether or not we should really even run relays. Well, I get a lot of questions about those, but because it's only 12 volts out, we get away with not having to use them, which is insane. In other applications, we'd absolutely have to have them or there's just no way the switch would survive. But since we're going to be running some extra things inside this boat, this is an Illumicraft Competitor 175 Shadow Series, the boat itself is a boss hull. The kit inside of it was ordered to be kind of basic, so we're kind of trying to spoof it up here, stick it in my garage for a little bit and add some lights. And since we're here, I figured I'd show you guys how to run a relay and when it's useful. Stay tuned, it's all happening right now. Today we are going to be installing LEDs all throughout the compartments, which are lightless and in my opinion draw a lot of voltage so we need a relay on the one switch that's going to be controlling all this these are five pin switches generally we just use three pin because they're way easier to wire but in here if you get five pin switches make sure they send you instructions like this it's where they tell you exactly where stuff goes otherwise it's a real crap show and they should send you some of these it's your leads otherwise if you play musical wires and guess and you can likely catch something on fire or melt your melt your wire melt your switch whatever So just FYI, that red loop-de-loop -loop wire there that's all piggybacked or daisy-chained, whatever you want to call it, that's going to be going, that's going to be coming from the battery. And then that middle pin right there, which would normally go to the accessory, is going to go to the relay. The only reason you have all these stupid wires is because like two of these are just meant to light up one of the LEDs in here. It's just like extra lights for a switch. It's a switch with a bunch of lights, which is why the three prong switches, they already light up when you turn them on, but when you have the five prong switches, they're on. And then when you turn them on, they're even brighter with like both of these lit up. See, see how it kind of goes. That's why if you really care about that, then totally rock these switches. Just make sure they give you instructions. If I show you this, I tell you, you get some other switch and it'll be backwards. The red will be in the bottom and then you'll melt your whole body. So like it's, it's uh, now all these are universal. You would think they would make a, a universal five pin switch lead so nobody would mess it up, but it's not true. So always be careful when you get your switches. You have all the pins as a five pin relay. You have all of them here. So I'm gonna give you the Joe Staff version of what a relay is. If I talk to you like how electrician talks to you, me, I don't know if any of us will ever get it, but essentially a relay is a switch on top of a magnet that completes the circuit. So your normal switch can bypass the current, so the switch never gets any damage. It all just, it's like, it's pretty clever actually, because normally we would run it like this, right from the battery directly into the switch to the accessory, which we get away with because it's only 12 volts, um, but the higher the accessory or the more wattage the LEDs, the more damage actually happens to the switch. Normally in anything that's high voltage, you have to run a relay, but this is how we run it. A relay essentially has a magnet inside of it, and that magnet, whenever we activate the switch inside the relay, the magnet is activated, it pulls up, or a solenoid pulls up or something, but it completes the circuit in the bottom. So the switch actually just powers the solenoid switch inside the relay, which then allows the current. So the switch ac never actually takes the brunt of the current going from the battery to the accessory. It just bypasses it completely with a solenoid in the relay. That's how the switch stays alive and lasts forever, blah, blah, blah. So now let's show you how to rig one up. Pin. 30, 86, 85, 87, and 87 A. And they're gonna line up specifically like that. So you'll know exactly. You don't get confused. Cause this is, see, this is backwards and this is forwards. Right here. We're gonna... So this is a five pin switch. What we are only gonna use for the terminals. We're gonna be using 87, 86, 85, and 30. We are not using 87 A. It's worthless to us for now. 30 comes right from the battery, right into the relay. 87 goes out to the accessory. 86 is a power wire also, but it's where you're running your switch to. So you're getting it from your power source, running through the switch, and then running into the 86 pin. And that's what actually powers the relay. And of course you need a ground to activate the relay solenoid. And so we use 85 as the ground. You can switch 85 and 86 around, but it's just this cleaner. This one, I don't know what it is. In more advanced wiring diagrams, you might need this. I think this is an additional power lead, but we're obviously not gonna need this. So we're gonna end up capping this off with some liquid tape so it doesn't do any funny business or touch anything over time. 
so after we get 87A terminal taken care of and patched out there, we go ahead and we attach an inline fuse to terminal 30. And then we're gonna be attaching a ring connector right there. And that's what's gonna go directly from the battery through the inline fuse. I believe that was 12 gauge wire, a 12 gauge inline fuse lead. You can get those on Amazon all day. They have been 12, 14, and 16 gauge. Though, when we run to the actual relay to power up the relay, because we happen to run a second inline fuse, that's the whole thing about the relays, you will be having to run twice the amount of wires to run run relay to an accessory. And that will go right here. All right, so let's get this thing wrapped up here and put on so we can get these lights going. I'll stop you from having to see the painstaking process that was running all these wires in and out of these compartments and then chaining all these lights together to get them to work correctly. But they turned out pretty sweet. I would have ran strips myself, but this is just what Tyler wanted. And I think they came out pretty nice. They're bright enough to light up the compartments, but not so bright they're going to blind you at night when you need them. We took a little bit of time also to install a few other things like this NOCO direct feed to the onboard battery charger. We temporarily removed these pedestals to fit in some custom welded boxes we got from Nate from TV Nation Outdoors, where Tyler specifically called them up and had these custom welded boxes made. They're pretty awesome. We also did a few things. We installed a few more things to secure sections I measured out where the actual struts would be and then we installed those things because he's gonna get them gap for carpet. These hatches are gap for carpet, so whenever they are done, they'll be carpeted to match the rest of the boat deck. They're gonna have to be remodded because he ordered them a little too high, but so it was a shame. I couldn't install them and show them to you right here, but I will tell you just from the view of them on the raw form, they are pretty sweet. Everything came out all right. It was a little stressful, a little hot outside. Didn't get as much done as we wanted to, but it was a well worth time here. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up and just show you what it's all about.